What's up guys, Adam Saxon, AKA Guy in the Cube. I hope you've been having a great week. There were a couple of awesome things that happened in the last few days. So let's dig in and see what we've got. First up is a blog post from Matt Allington where he looks at DAX time intelligence for beginners. I don't know about you, but for me, the date and time aspects of my model are very important. It's a must have when I'm designing reports and want to get my visualizations just right. And when you have date and times, you need some intelligence that goes along with that. There are specific DAX functions that can help you with that, and Matt walks through those functions for you. How do you work with time? How do you work with dates? How do you get the right calculations and measures inside of your model to make your visuals really pop? So this blog post is really great for understanding the basic things, the beginning things, for really understanding how to do that in your reports. So if you're not familiar with those functions from a DAX perspective for date and time intelligence, be sure to check out this blog post, or if you are familiar but you want a little refresh, check it out also. <laughs> Melissa Coates has a blog post where she looks at defining the components of a modern data warehouse. People have argued whether or not a data warehouse is even relevant in this day and age, and me personally, I'm on the side that thinks that it is. A data warehouse can be very valuable, especially as you get large data that's across different data sources. It can really help you. And so what Melissa does in this blog post is goes through those items that are components and that take a piece of that data warehouse. Everything from data governance to data cataloging to your semantic model. So if you're interested about those different areas with inside of your data model or what composes your data warehouse, take a look at this blog post and see her take on what those items are. Paul Turley's got a blog post that leads to a big announcement, which is the January 2017 preview of Power BI reports inside of reporting services. This was big, a lot of people have been waiting for this, and what this includes is the ability to actually include Power BI reports inside of reporting services, so you can view those reports inside of the web portal. That's huge, right? Some people have coined this as the Power BI on-premises implementation. Really what this is, is you can upload a PBIX file to reporting services for right now that uses the analysis services live connection inside of the model. Other data sources will come down the road. There are a bunch of blog posts around this as well as updates that I made to the official documentation that support this. This is the next step to have Power BI reports inside of reporting services. You can download the installer. The setup only takes a few minutes and you can be up and running. Be sure to check out Paul's blog post. He's got some links to Ricardo's blog post on the official reporting services team site. And I've got all of the links for all of these items down in the description below, along with some additional links specific for the reporting services release under the bonus section. So check that out down in the description below. Do you use Direct Query inside of Power BI, or is there maybe a data source that you want to use with Direct Query that's not available? The product team has a survey available that you can fill out and provide that feedback to the product team. The link is down below. You can fill out that survey, submit your feedback to the product team with regards to Direct Query, and you never know. Some of that information may show up in the product. You can help shape it. Another feature that was released this last week that got a lot of fanfare on Twitter is the ability to configure email subscriptions for reports inside of Power BI. So when you go to a report on the top bar, you will see a subscribe button and you can go and configure how you wanna receive that report inside of your mailbox. For most subscriptions, this will be once a day and you'll get an overview of that report with a link that'll take you directly to that report in the web. This is great to just get a quick status of what items may be there. You can configure your report to look like a dashboard and just get that in your email inbox. So in the morning, you can look at it, figure out what's new, what's happening, and whether or not you need to dig in further. Devin Knight from Pragmatic Works also put together a video that just is an overview of the feature. So be sure to check that out on YouTube. I'll have that link down in the bonus section below. Okay, my question for today is, have you downloaded the Reporting Services Technical Preview and have you tried Power BI reports inside of it? Let me know down in the comments below if you're having problems with it or if you think you need a little more information just to help you get started. As I mentioned before, all the links for all of the items I've talked about, including bonus items, are down in the description below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe for more great content. And as always, thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome.